Now let's take you through the basics of project management. First we'll look at an existing project and we'll show off the navigation of the project homepage and dashboard and some of the various features you can take advantage of and review. Then we'll enter our first new project together and take a look at how that looks within WorkOtter. So let's get started. First let's take a look at an existing project so that we can see how projects get set up and how they look in a production setting. So I can again navigate in a variety of different ways. I can use the visual workflow, I can navigate by stage, and we'll do it that way this time. So I'm going to go to the active projects. And so here are my many active projects in WorkOtter. And let's just go pick on one, uh, maybe this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that project up. And so this is a typical project homepage or dashboard. A couple things we'll share. So here's the title of the project. Here's an icon that opens up the scorecard report. So when I click on that, I get that interesting report that has all the details of the project, including an interactive Gantt view and other things that you might be interested in. I'll close that now. Uh, here are the breadcrumbs. So you can see where you've been. And then as we showed in the general navigation, we have some additional features here at the top. So here's how I can go update the project, copy the project, delete the project, add additional attachments at the project level, and then some critical settings that many project managers ha like to have quick access to. Now normally this is collapsed, uh, but we'll expand or collapse that as we need to during this training. Additionally, we've got these tabs. This just does a little quick taxonomy on the project. So if you want to go look at all the built-in reports, those are all together here or if you want to just focus in on the dates or head back to the dashboard these tabs are your friends okay now these are all things you've seen before in some of the general navigation so hopefully you can repeat on some of these things but remember how you can expand and collapse or further expand these different containers within work Otter, and you can drill into the data just like we showed before so all of that applies here as well. Now over here, this is another one of those context-sensitive left-side menus. Remember, it changes as we're navigating around. So within a project, it becomes the project toolbox. And this is how you're in your living as a project manager in WorkOtter. So let's explore some of the features at a very high level. So underneath resources, here's where I have my team, where I can click here. And a team could be people, like we're seeing here. Or it could be just generic roles and proficiencies that will eventually or already are being assigned within the project. So you can see that's how a team might work. Under the manage plan, here's where you can see your plan. So I can click here and I can see all of the different milestones and deliverables and tasks organized together. Uh, I can click on any row and make my edits directly or I can cancel that. And again, we've got these interesting ribbon bar features. Now these plans work if you've used project management software before you know it has a lot of similar features where you can expand and collapse things you know using these little arrows here. Uh, we've got some interesting things down in the footer where if you want to only see you know the highest level or one level or two levels you know you, you can see how many levels you want to see here. Um, you can click on a task just like you can click on anything that's underlined as a hyperlink and this brings up a, a detailed view of that task and you might want to play with the document management capabilities or maybe you want to assign an additional person from the existing team to help out with this task. Okay, So I'm going to close that. Um, or maybe you want to see it in a, in a really elegant Gantt chart. So I clicked on the Gantt viewer and now I've got this very interactive experience that you can explore. Uh, you've got some additional features here now that you're looking at a Gantt view. Maybe you'd like to see it by week. Or maybe you want to turn on or off the dependency lines or the critical path. Maybe you want to hover over something and have this kind of x-ray vision. Or maybe you want to click directly and make some really interesting edits. So like from here I can adjust the percent complete. I can extend this task by grabbing this little guy above the arrow. See, I'm making it longer. And when I save that, that'll adjust the rest of the plan for me automatically. 
Maybe I want to create new dependency relationships just by dragging and dropping between any two tasks or removing those dependency relationships, right? Or maybe I just want to keep the start and end durations the same, but I just need to move the whole task out to some new dates. So there's got a lot of really interesting features that you can take advantage of in the Gantt chart. Uh, another interesting feature is you can leave this Gantt chart as is where is and look at it in a Kanban. So Kanban reminds me of sticky notes on a board and these are my columns so I can see exactly where things are at in the life cycle of the project and I can create my own columns by coming over here and typing things and hitting the return key like prod and QA and dev test. So I just created several new columns and I can organize these by moving them left to right and then I can click hold and drag these to show where they're at. So we've got some really interesting features that you can explore and then head back to the Gantt view. So these are some interesting project features within the plan. Now if I'm going to use my little breadcrumbs here to head back to the home page for this project and we can explore a few more settings here. What other things can I do? Well, we've got our raid logs, risks, issues, and changes. Optionally, we can add action items and support items. And I can either quickly add a new risk, or if I want to see the existing risks that we're managing, I can just click on risks, and so here are all the risks. And just like on the project plan, I can click on it and look at all the details, which are different from a task, right? So in here, I have my impact, probability, exposure, my fields below have comments as well as contingency plan, mitigation plan, triggers, things that are appropriate for risk management while still keeping assignments and attachments in place. And just like before you can make your edits in line as well. And that's true for issues and changes. Now under assess we've got some interesting features here as well where I can come in and set the project status. So this is a history of the status reports and if I want to add a new status report I've got this customizable form this is just the out-of-the-box experience right where I can set the project in red status and set some of these other key indicators this form again can be tailored to each business needs and then you can put your notes in here and once I enter that status report then it'll join the other status reports in the history and if I head back to the home page, now you can see the status has been changed to red. So these are all interesting features that you can explore within the project. And we'll have additional videos to get deeper into some of the integrations, like our deep and rich integration with Microsoft Project, our deep and rich integration with Jira, our integration with Excel, and as some of the reports as well, which you're free to explore over in the reporting tab.